the voice. That had to be a really crazy experience. What was that like for you? It was. It was the first time I'd ever been anywhere really outside of North Carolina. No so I way. went to LA. Yeah. That was a culture shock for me. Oh my God. <laughs> It's your girl, Emily Curl, back at iHeartRadio. Today, we're hanging out with country music singer and songwriter Cameron Marlowe is here. Let's give it up for Cam. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? It's nice to see you. Good to see you as well. Now, have you been to our iHeart studios before? This is the first time? Yeah, this is the first one, yeah. Oh, welcome. We're yeah. glad to have you. Thank you. So now you live in Nashville. I do. Where did you grow up? Where's home? I grew up in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Did you always love country music growing up? Absolutely. I mean, that's just kind of that was that's what surrounded me being from that area. So I enjoyed I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I grew up in um, in Georgia, and so it was always in my household. We were playing Alan Jackson, George Jones. Oh, yeah. Like we had all of the greats. What did you grow up listening to? George Jones as well. That's one of my yeah, absolute favorites. Mine George too. Stray, Brooks and Dunn, all of them. What's your favorite George Jones song? Oh, I would have to say he stopped loving her today. That's kind of a cliche one, but yeah. I do love that song. And then Heartbreak Hotel. Oh, I always love She Thinks I Still Care. That Ooh, was another good one. one. Yeah. Would you ever cover a George Jones song in, like, in your set? Do you do that? No, I do a Merle, Hag a Merle Haggard song with seven now. Oh, what Merle Haggard song? I think I'll just stay here and drink. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So you grew up in North Carolina. Did you always know that you wanted to be a country singer? What was that first pivotal moment for you? Oh, Were you shoot. like, okay, I think this is going to work for me? Um, I never knew that I wanted to do this full time. I basically just kind of fell into it. I, uh, I started just playing in random bars and stuff like that. And then uh, I did the voice thing. Uh, so I was on that show for a little while. And that's kind of where everything switched for me mentally because I was met so many songwriters out there. Yeah. And so once I started getting that itch, I was like, I have to, I have to continue on and keep doing this. The voice that had to be a really crazy experience. What was that like for you? It was. It was the first time I'd ever been anywhere really outside of North Carolina. No so I went way. to LA. That was a culture shock for me. Oh my god! And when was this? This, this was... was 2018. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed the heck out of it. Great experience. Great time. Yeah. And who was your coach on The Voice? Uh, Blake. Blake Show. Blake. Yeah. What was that like working with Blake? Oh, it was great. I mean, yeah. uh, I actually just ran into him uh, up in Canada two days ago. Yeah. What? On we purpose were, or on accident? No, we were playing a show together up there. Oh, so, yeah. I was like, wait, where'd you run into him in Canada? <laughs> well, you've also been playing some shows. You were on the Dangerous Tour this summer. It was. What was that like? Oh my gosh, uh, the crowds are insane. I feel like that's a rowdy crowd. That is a rowdy crowd for sure. And they are ready to party every night. So uh, you have to bring it every show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when you're working with like a party crowd like that, do you also have to get like hype before? Like, do you also like to drink or do anything on stage before you get there? We always take a pre-show shot, uh, just just kind of get loose. But other than that, we just yeah, we'll listen to some rap music on the bus or something like that, just to really get us rowdy and <laughs> get ready to go out. So there. you have the hype playlist. Yeah, we have the hype playlist. For what sure. is the song that really gets you going? Dreams and nightmares. Meek Mill. That song oh my god, get me, a yeah. little Meek Mill Drake with Going Bad too. Oh, like yeah. I feel like you can't get wrong with that. <laughs> Let's also talk about your album first and foremost. Congratulations. Thank we you. were Cowboys. It's out now. And you just recently released this. I did. Tell us about this project. It's special to you, right? Yes, this project's uh, big special. Or, <laughs> this project is big time it is, special. It is big special. <laughs> big special. <for> sure. <laughs> uh, this album was really just kind of about my whole life. So uh, I, even from the very first song, it talks about how I grew up to the last song being in Nashville and everything in between, all the things that I've thought, all the uh, life things that I've uh, been through, and breakups, the love yeah. stories, all of it. So so we have everything in there. You're we do. You're touching on it all. Yeah. How would you describe how you grew up, like starting with that first song? Oh gosh, in a very rural place, um, very, I, or very glad that that's where I grew up. Uh, I learned a lot that way. I didn't really grow up with like a phone in my hand or anything like that. I grew up yeah. outside and I was very fortunate that way because I, I learned so much from uh, that style of life, I felt totally. like. Is it interesting for you as an artist now because I feel like so much of it is communicating with your fans, you're posting TikToks and Instagrams <laughs> and things like that, not growing up with that or not necessarily like loving that as much. Yeah. Like, What is that like to try to transition into that? Uh, that's a struggle. Uh, that's probably one of my biggest weaknesses as an artist. Uh, I have to learn to be more social, like on social media. Uh, I love to talk to people, but I just have, yeah. for some reason, putting a phone in front of my hand is uh, it it's a tough natural. thing. It doesn't, but I'm getting there. Yeah. Well, you're also getting ready to go on your own headlining tour. I am. And then you're joining Thomas Rhett this yeah. fall. How did that come about? Oh, uh, golly. I guess we just really wanted to promote this album as best as we could. This, uh, we're out with my buddy Wyatt McCubbin. Uh, yeah. He's going to be joining us for our tour. And we're just going to as many places as we can. We're actually coming up to New York. New York. I cannot talk today. <laughs> New hey, York listen, City. It's, it's early, okay? <laughs> <laughs> coming up to New New York City and yeah we're just gonna have a lot of fun with it just see everybody that we can yeah is there anywhere else you're really excited about like to, to visit I'm excited to go back to my hometown bar which would be Coyote Joe's and in, uh, in Charlotte North Carolina oh so. my god Coyote Joe's yeah. uh, <laughs> it sounds about as right as it is <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the name is. Are your friends and family, are they just so proud? What do they think about all of this? Uh, they've been some of the most supportive people in the world. I mean, they've always told me to chase this. And even when I didn't think I should or shouldn't even think about getting into the music industry, they've always had my back on it. So I'm very fortunate to have a family that I have. Yeah. Well, Cameron, we're so excited for you. Congratulations you on so the much. tour, everything coming about. Can we give it up one more time for Cameron? <laughs> Thank you. And thank you all for watching. Make sure you stream all of Cameron's music on iHeartCountry, including his new album, We Were Cowboys. It's out now. Go listen to it. And thank you guys for watching.